Welcome back to Lighten Up. Tonight, we have a great guest. I want you to put your hands together and give some love to Mr. Rod Waddell. Yeah. All right. Tired, but uh, pretty good otherwise. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Lighten Up. And you know, we're talking a little bit about just lightening your load, basically in life, and and how sometimes we make life a little harder for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I know you're a counselor because you <laughs> counsel me, even though you don't want to most of the time. <laughs> so, and I appreciate that. Thank you. And please don't send the bill. <laughs> I have no money. So, but you know, I wanted to talk to you just about. Basically, not only are you a counselor, but you kind of came from a, a far way, and, and I'd like to kind of share that with, with my audience, uh, you know, kind of having to overcome some adversities. Let's talk a little bit about that. Right. I think, I think what you're referring to is most people don't realize that I'm legally blind, and I never make a big deal of it, and, and quite frankly, I don't want to. It was just, uh, I think when I was a... I know when I was a young man, I decided I was going to compete on an equal stage. There were not going to be any handicapped. I realized pretty early on also that we all are handicapped in one way or another. Some of it shows. I mean, mine doesn't, which sometimes makes it interesting when I walk up to a fast food counter and I say, can you tell me what's up there? And the person goes, what's wrong with you? You know, they, they don't right. realize anything's wrong. Right. And right. Uh, so it makes them interesting situations because it's, it's too awkward and they're not, they're not going to believe you. It looks like you're just strange. But, uh, but life overall has been, I think, a blessing. It's been a very good experience. And some of the challenges, you know, what, what doesn't kill me only makes me stronger and doing right. that kind of stuff. And you've done some really crazy things before you came to that realization. <laughs> like you told me that you, what was it, that you cheated on your driver's license test. <laughs> She wanted to drive. So. I did. <laughs> tell, I did. tell us about that story. Yeah, when you're 16 or 17, it's hard <laughs> to have a date unless you have your own car. So, That's uh, right. My, I think my dad, you know, he, he realized the situation, so he kept putting his boulders in front of me. He says, you can't, uh, uh, you can have your own car, but you've got to have your own insurance and, and buy your own car. You've got to have enough money to all done that, and I did that. And, uh, and I did actually uh, cheat to get my driver's license. I memorized the item. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's a true story. I mean, I, I, uh, the guy uh, was a little town, and I won't tell you which state, but it's a small town. <laughs> I want to go back there one of these days. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, the guy says, fifth line, third, uh, third letter, and I could, I could see the whole thing. Okay. So, uh, was, and I, you know, I was E, F, C, Z, V, B, F, and I can still see the chart. Right. And, um, and I did pass the driving test, and I did have um, three Mustangs. Uh, but when I was, I was 22, I, um, uh, it was time for my driver's license renewal, and I went, you know, this is not right. And so I didn't renew my driver's license, and, and what I learned is I got into sailing. Right. And when you sail, I mean, I don't, I don't know if anybody's been involved with sailing, but it feels like you're flying. I mean, it feels like you're, you're just flying. And so I get that same thrill and excitement. So that from, was your alternative That was my alternative. And okay. uh, I learned to sail and, and do it that way. And I'm doing eight knots, you know, flying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Speeding. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, so. the, but the good thing is that you actually, you know, you, you learned that some, you had to make a choice. And the choice was to accept that you actually had a disability in that way and that there were some things that you were going to be limited um, in doing, but yet you could replace it with something and then excel in other ways because mm. you, you, know, you, you went to school, you, you did the whole counseling thing. I think that, that you've actually weaved in the counseling in it's, a lot of ways. because It's you know, been that, a great foundation um, in terms of having psychology understand a lot about what makes people tick. And particularly when we're, we're doing leadership seminars or we're teaching motivation or we're talking about rewards and incentives, I can take things that are fairly, I, I don't know, theoretical and present them in a very practical way. Right. And I think a part of that is because, you know, I have had my own business. I've worked with a lot of the Fortune 100 companies and, and doing that kind of stuff. So I've got lots of stories to tell right. and stories about myself right. uh, yeah. in terms of, uh, you know, having the worst manager in the world. I mean, uh, right. <clears throat> I was a psychologist and I got a break and I, I made a transition into business. And... Um, and my manager made it very clear that uh, I was to push him up the uh, organizational ladder. 
And he said, don't tell anybody you're a psychologist because it makes people nervous. And oh. it made him nervous, you know. And, uh, but I would, I remember I, I really wanted to please him. He reminded me of my dad. He was a big guy. My dad was 6'2", right. 2'10". Two, two and, and, so, and, and, I, and these are not, I'm not making these up. But a story like, um, he'd say, I want you to do something for me. I want you to do this project. And I'd come up with my 20 questions because I want to do it right. You know, right. Do we have a budget for this? And is there people you want me to talk to, not to? And, you know, if I have to tell you how to do it, I'll find somebody who can. Right. And so you go off and do your best bet and come back, you know, and, and it's not right, of course, because yeah. he's got his own thing. Or I'd hand in a report and he'd look at it, you know, and he'd turn it a different way and he'd hand it back to him and says, you need to do it again. Ah. And I'd say, okay, is it <laughs> too short, too long, too detailed? Not, he said, I don't know, but I'll know it when I see it. Right. I mean, on and on and on. These are real Just stories difficult. that, you know, let people do that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but you learn from those things. You do learn from those things. Well, it took some time. I mean, it's, it's, it's an evolutionary process. I think, uh, you know, when I was young, I, I, it certainly it wasn't fun to, to not be able to play ball the way that other people, you know, they play, here's a you know, good interest story. You know, playing uh, baseball, right? right? You're outfield. I don't where, even see the batter, where okay? Where is the ball? <laughs> so I can hear the bat go, and I'm listening for the ball to hit the ground. It's I'm going to run it. It's coming. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is it's the guy absolutely. who tells me I'm beautiful. Okay, Rod Bedell people. We'll be right back with more light now. <laughs>